today I had to do a little episode I could not restrict myself from doing. I was going to say I can't do it by myself because Justin isn't here. But the trailer had dropped for perhaps the most anticipated sequel almost of all time was Ghostbusters Afterlife, directed by Jason Reitman. And I just had to kind of tell you about my feelings about this trailer because I could not keep them inside. I could not just say nothing. I had to say something about this. I woke up this morning, the first thing I did was watch the trailer. And the second thing that happened was Justin messaged me and said, did you see the trailer? We both chatted about it for a little bit and um, and the first thing that came up was we said we hoped it wouldn't be just a Stranger Things ripoff. The trailer could be showing a little bit more than we want as far as that aspect of things. I hope it's more of a marketing scheme than anything else. So I've been drinking rum and beer all day. These are the impressions I had. And, and the first thing is they didn't shove Ghostbusters down your throat. They didn't play the theme song once, which I think is very, very important. They played cues from the first movie that I think diehard fans really appreciate. And, it, and I heard those little cues. Venkman first walks in Dana's apartment. It, 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 it hits you in the fucking heart. I think harder than the theme song does. Not once do they say the name Ghostbusters. They show a bit of the technology, but not enough to shove it down your throat. At the end, when they show the Ecto-1, and you show one of the kids shooting a proton pack that's attached to the Ecto-1, it is as Ghostbusters as you can get without ever saying the word Ghostbusters. Another thing I really dug about the trailer is the music. As I said before, they don't use the Ghostbusters theme at all, but they use cues from the film, which I think as diehard fans, you get. And they use audio from Peter Venkman saying, Call it fate. Call it luck. Call it karma. And that, when that kicked in, I had tears in my eyes because I knew this was a real legit Ghostbusters sequel. Not like the bullshit remake, rehash, reboot, whatever that was. It did not have the spirit of Ghostbusters. And you watch this and it has the spirit of Ghostbusters, not only the movie, but you even catch little glimpses of the cartoon in this. In the cartoon, there was the junior Ghostbusters and he really took their time to make this movie something for the fans. I don't believe that the kids are gonna be the Ghostbusters. I really hope and believe that at the end of the movie is that Paul Rudd and the mother of the children are going to be the new Ghostbusters. I really believe the children are going to have to go out and find the old crew, Winston and Peter and Ray, and convince them that something is happening and convince them to don the gear and come back they are going to have to convince the adults of the movie to take over their mantle. And I think it really will be, in the end, a Passing of the Torch movie. I also believe that whatever is happening in this small town, in the trailer, is that Egon has buried the containment unit under the ground because if he can't keep it in the firehouse, where is he going to keep it? The containment unit has to go somewhere to keep the ghosts. I think he has buried it under the ground in this farmhouse in the hopes that there will never be a breach. And in this case, there is a crack or a breach in the containment unit and the ghosts are getting out and that's what the children see. Holy Christ. Completely looking forward to it. And I will go on opening day. I'll probably go the next day too. And I have all the hope in the world that Jason Reitman will do all of us justice. And we'll start a brand new amazing Ghostbusters franchise that will hopefully go on forever.